Hey there, Old Man Cuber here, where I've been slow cubing since 82. This is uh, an unboxing video. Now, you have seen... Oh, let's do this first. Make it official. Here we go. Alright, so most of you have seen some of my very slow, very crappy videos where I time myself learning some new cubes. I've been working on a 3x3, 2x2, uh, square one. I've recently done the four and the five in, in tournaments. See this? That's a ghost cube, and I can't even working on it partially. But uh, so anyway, in most of those videos, you don't see me talking unless I'm kind of excited about the time. So, but this is a, an official unboxing video, and you'll see that I've already unboxed it. But we're we're not going to talk about that. At least I opened the boxes and, and checked out the stuff just to make sure it was uh, was there. So anyway, all right. So my friend Joe, who I've been to a few competitions with, he has this magnetic clock. And here's Joe's package. So as you can see, I've already opened it. But uh, but I'd like to show this to you guys. This is one of the new style magnetic clocks that you can't get, they have to be specially made. So, this is, I think this is an A-Long. I don't know where Joe got this, but he made it for me. And let's go ahead and unbox it. Joe uses his own templates, and we talked about this for quite a while. Had several conversations beforehand about <clears throat> how we were going to uh, customize this. And, okay, so I'm going to set this over here. Now this is this is the clock. This is so this is a standard size of uh, Rubik's clock. And it's a tournament, uh, tournament acceptable. I've already checked with a couple of folks, and but you'll see that it's customized. This in the background, you'll see that this is an Ohio State Buckeyes logo, and on the back, this is a United States Air Force logo. So I'm retired Air Force. So I did 20 years, but yes, I do some speed cubing now when I'm not writing software. But I'm also we're from Ohio, family's from Ohio, so we do uh, we love our Buckeyes. So anyway, this is a wonderful clock. I've done some solves on it already uh, before putting it back in the box. But uh, so let's go ahead and scramble this. So you hear that nice click? That's a wonderful click. That's you don't hear that in a standard in a standard clock because there are pins and there's no pins in this and the pins tend to get loose uh, they tend to uh, bend uh, you can't you can over lube them so they don't even uh, uh, in fact let me go find let me go find my my standard clock all right so just stay hang out there for a second you can start the clock for a while So we're back. This is my old clock. And you'll see that I've bent the pins, or I haven't bent the pins enough. It's kind of a bit clunky. And the problem with these old clocks is that they can actually slip. And you see, I kind of did that. And, now they... and if they slip enough, they'll actually do more than, see, this is only supposed to move these four. So most people just tend to solve it like this. Well, I got tired of that. 
So that's why I had Joe make, after I saw this in a competition, this is why I had Joe make me one. So let's go ahead and continue to scramble this. And it just has a nice, very tight, clicky feel. And I'm never worried about, so no matter how much I do that, it'll never slip. It'll never slip. So I can saw it like this, like this, like this. And um, I checked already, and these rings are allowed uh, because they're consistent. There's no way I can close my eyes and determine where the pins are. And it's consistent everywhere. Okay, so we'll just continue to... Okay, all right, so let's see. Let's do a solve. This is not going to be fast at all, of course. My record on clock is 23 seconds. And I've probably only done a total 50 solves ever. Okay, so let's see if that works. All right, so. Okay, so we're just going to just stand it. I'm not even really going to do I don't know why I even did the timer. Okay, so that's done. Turn it over. Okay, so we got 27 seconds. So the great thing about that was I didn't have to worry about the pins at all. And when they go in between, uh, it's either all one side or all the other. I don't have to worry about it slipping at all. I don't have to worry about gear slipping on this. So I love this. So for Joe, we're going to do another solve. Here, let's see if I can do that. All right, so let's do another solve. And, oops. Okay. And, So, <clears throat> all right, I'll just go ahead and start on this side. Let's see, we'll do this. We'll do that. All right, so we're good there. I think I messed up the pin, but. All right, here we go. <laughs> I messed up already. All right, that's okay. slow time so yeah this is a very solid clock I'd highly recommend if you want one go ahead and reach out to Joe if you see him at a competition um, his name's Joe Browning he I went to the respect Kansas 2018 competition with him Oklahoma open 2019 and Oklahoma spring 2019 so I love this show highly recommend it it's a I mean um, Um, I did pay a little bit more for this, but I think it's worth it. I think these are 11 bucks out of the box, but they're just, they're crappy. They are just terrible. And there's only two manufacturers. They're uh, overseas. The pins are too thin. Um, and then I also bought a 1980s original one. 
and uh, the pins are thicker and more solid <clears throat> but I ended up ruining it the first night because I messed up the the gear plastic by trying to bend one of the pins so this is the this is the way to go so I hope clock stays around as an official competition and for a couple more years because I'd love to be able to use this in some kind of competitions so let me do one for Joe we'll do one more solve so let's see side because I always start with this pin down below okay so we'll another 27 so a good solid clock highly recommend this um, I could because uh, it's not glued back together I can take this back apart and um, down the road I can relube it and reseal it I can change out these uh, these backgrounds but I really love the Air Force one and the Ohio State one now granted this is not a logo made for a clock so it doesn't look like an Ohio State logo. This doesn't look explicitly like a Air Force logo, but I love it no matter what. And uh, you can definitely tell it's mine. So thanks again, Joe. Love your work. And we'll see you at the next competition. All right. So there's two parts to this. And I'm very excited. I'll go ahead and, well, let's set this to the side here. <clears throat> so I kind of waited to do this unboxing because I wanted to show another thing here. I just got this off of eBay. And so I have been cubing since 1982. Probably a little bit before then, but that's when I got my first one. I bought, and that's when I got my first one. I think it was my birthday, 1982. I remember uh, using in the eighth in the eighth grade learning in class but um, I've always wanted I've over the years I've lost my original Rubik's Cube and I've wanted another one since so I bought these on eBay these run anywhere from like 25 to 75 dollars I've seen them go as high as a hundred I don't know if anybody's actually bought them, but uh, there's something else in here. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, we'll leave it at that. But this, uh, according to the eBay listing, these are new sealed factory original cubes, and they certainly look like it. These do not look like reproduction, and if they were, I'd be kind of ticked off. But I, I wanted two of them because I wanted to keep one sealed, but I always wanted to play around and, and, and take one to competitions and show these younger cubers what the old cubes look like. So let's go ahead and just, let's see. We'll go ahead and open one of these up. It does feel like it's old. It doesn't feel super dry. I wonder if these have been sitting in a factory somewhere. I have not seen another one of these. Uh, nobody's brought one in competition so okay they always came in this oh they're taped up so 
let's go ahead and open that. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> okay. We'll just leave it at that. I think I would like to get this open because I, I think there's. There we go. Wow. Oh, yeah. This does have to be original. This is wonderful. This is dry. It looks yellow. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Um, doesn't really tell you anything. A lot of the new cubes show you how to, how to solve it. Okay, so we'll set that to the side. All right, so first turns. I'm, I imagine this is, this is going to be terrible. But take a look at that. That is the original Rubik's Cube. These things are 39, almost 40 years old. Oh yeah, this is terrible. You can just hear how dry that is. So back in the day, what you'd have to do is... Oh, there's a sticker there. Made in Taiwan. Okay. Alright, so we'll set that this side there. Oh yeah. So back in the day, you'd have to get a cube and you'd have to just take time and just break it in. So what you do is you take it apart and you put Vaseline on it. So I would pry this apart and uh, I think we sanded it down a little bit. You see how, how the, some of the pieces are open. I mean, they're not, I mean the, today's cubes are made much better, but this is what everybody had. This is what the only thing we had. So, um, so what I'll probably do for another video is probably just lube that up. Um, so it has the original Rubik's Cube sticker. Also to tension these, you'd have to peel the stickers off and there's screws underneath there. There might be a little cap. But I remember there just being a screw underneath there. So. I can't, I can't even, I can't finger trick any of that. Oh, it's just, now, this is kind of what I expect. I didn't expect it to work right out of the box. Um, this is a funny story. So my wife and I met in high school and she always wore this perfume that I always love. Well, a year or two ago, I found that same perfume on eBay. So I bought one and it, again, it was like a 1980s version. Uh, of that perfume and <laughs> just like this cube it sat around got dry uh, all the oils and scents in that perfume just I don't know what happened but it smelled like toilet water it was horrible and I paid a lot for it but this these I paid uh, with shipping 60 bucks total so 20 bucks a piece um, but I'm excited to have these. I'll, I'll probably take these two. I'll probably take this one and just put it in storage. I may take this one to a competition, let folks use it. And I may see if I can tension this so I can actually try to speed solve with this. My best time on these old Ruby's Cubes was 54 seconds. And I do want to show you that what I used to use. This is how I learned how uh, to solve the Ruby's Cube. This is, when we talk about beginner's method, this is almost simpler than the beginner's method. So um, this is my original book back from 1982. I might have even got this in 1981. I don't know. You can tell it's it's yellowed. It's very old. There's no color in it like those old books had. Um, T's instead of U's. The method. Um, 
minuses instead of primes, but you, you worked, it was top down, and so, and it was layer by layer, so you'd work on the top, and then work on the middle, and then work on the bottom. So, but you do recognize some of these old Sune patterns, I mean, uh, uh, Sune, Anti-Sune, these are the old, these are the uh, two-step OLL patterns. Um, yeah, this is when you have the corners in place. Uh, CFOP now uses, of course, edges first and then corners. This was corners first and then edges. Um, and so I used this until 2018. I mean, I wasn't, I never went for time. I thought getting the cube done in 70 or 80 seconds was the way to was the way to do it and then I didn't really go for time. So last year, early twenty eighteen, I started going for time. I picked up this book. This is by Jeffrey Farasano. He wrote this book in nineteen eighty one. Now you guys may have know about the Farasano method, uh, but it's also known as the Ortega method for two by two. And that's where he does a corners first solution and then does the does the edges and then uh, finishes the top and the bottom layers and then does the uh, middle slice so uh, you'll recognize there's the OLO patterns again this is pre-color so how old is this book 1981 I bought this on eBay probably I don't know 10 years ago um, and so when I moved away from the beginner solution, I used this for about six months, got it down to 32 seconds, and now I'm since August 2018, I've been using CFOP. I now have a PB of 22 seconds, and I've been working on some of the bigger cubes ever since. So, anyway, I just wanted to, sorry, Joe, for the delay on getting this boxing unboxing done, but, uh, Lots of things been happening, and but I was very excited to get this done for you, and uh, I'll be doing more unboxings in the future. So, take care, guys. We'll see.